to be or not to be? That is the question. Whether it is nobler in the mind to suffer the slings and arrows of outrageous fortune, or to take arms against a sea of troubles and by opposing end them. To die, to sleep no more, and by a sleep to say we end the heartache and the thousand natural shocks that the flesh is heir to. It is a consummation devoutly to be wished to die, to sleep. To sleep, perchance to dream. Aye, there's the rub, for in that sleep of death what dreams may come when we have shuffled off this mortal coil must give us pause. There's the respect that makes calamity of so long life. For who would bear the whips and scorns of time, thy oppressor's wrong, the proud man's contumely, the pangs of disprized love, the law's delay, the insolence of office, and the spurs that patient merit of thy unworthy takes, when he himself might his quietus make with a bare bodkin? Who would Fardell's bear to grunt and sweat under a weary life? but that the dread of something after death, the undiscovered country, from whose bourne no traveller returns, puzzles the will, and makes us rather bear those ills we have, than to fly to others that we know not of. Thus, conscience does make cowards of us all, and thus the native hue of resolution is sickled over with the pale cast of thought and enterprise of great pitch and moment with disregard their current turned awry and lose the name of action.